Hello Stamper, welcome to Frenchie's video. I'm France Martin, independent demonstrator with Stamping Up at FrenchieStamps.com in the US. Today it's all about Christmas in July. I'm going to share a simple card for Christmas in July today and then one on the 24, I think. Um, yes, the 24th of July. Also, below you get the direct link to go right to my blog. You're going to have all measurements, all supplies that I use for this card. Plus, I get a special offer with qualify order to get a, a PDF with extra Christmas card for celebrating Christmas in July. Very simple. It's going to be quick. I pre-done many things in advance. I'm using the perfectly played and comfort and oh um try to use different stuff that our holiday catalog just come in uh, next month but it's such a thing uh, christmas in july and many people like to start well that is my goal so what we got here i got a piece of crumb cake a uh, card uh, base that measure five and a half by eight and a half score at four and a quarter this will be our card base inside I stamp hoping that you're busy here come together in Christmas cheer. I think this year that's very appropriate for that. It's been kind of a crazy year. So I'm using a perfectly played. So I was using just the grading in this. I didn't want to use the trees. I wanted to really stay with everyday stamp set to do Christmas card. And then you're going to see we can add the tree or not. So I get the base, I get the inside done. I'm using in good taste for a designer series paper. I want it a bit like a country style vintage. Uh, this is that wood grain with that pinkish in the back. Uh, this measure um, four and three eighths. I'm gonna have all measurement four and one eight. I think that's correct. No, this is um, five and a quarter by four. This is five and three eight by four and one eight. But don't worry about marking the measurement. I will add it all on my blog right below. You get the direct link. Now I'm going to put this at the top and note that it's just a tiny border. I do a lot of tiny border. Sometimes I just want a little uh, border. Now that we get those two, I'm going to use linen thread. And this is the old one. I had stuck up on <coughs> linen thread. I ran out once of linen thread and I swear I will never run out again. So uh, that's why you, I'm using the old one there. But what happened with the old one? See, you get the kinks in them. See? Now they come on a spool. But to remove the, <coughs> sorry, to remove the kinks in them, I take my bone folder and I just pull. And see? You don't have no more. Boom. I think I'm going to need a little bit more because we're going to do a little bit of, like I said, I want kind of like country vintage. I'm going to put my adhesive in the back. Go right on the side. And I'm going to start um, right at the top here. You know what I need right at the edge because here we go and then we're going to crisscross that three times so let's go one I like to do both each side there don't worry where the center go because we're going to fix that and then we're going to come in the center right here put that there let's cut this and now I always like to re-secure uh, where the end was. Now we're going to put that on top of our crumb cake. Now I'm going to take another piece of um, our linen thread and I'm going to pass this under the three layers. Now this is where it's going to do the trick where the 
it's going to uh, bunch together. I want it a little bit higher because we're going to have another element there and one at the bottom. So I'm going to tie this right here and see it's going to go exactly the way that you want your center there. See the how it's feather that together, not feather. Uh, it almost looked like a chicken uh, foot, right? Now I'm going to do a bow here, just a little tiny bow. And I'm going to pull this and this. You know what? I think I want a double bow. I, one, it's not enough. It, it's too little, I think. So let me see what we can do to remove this. If you take your scissors and you go in the knot, boom. See, the more I make mistakes, the better it is for you. You learn tricks like that. So we're going to fold this in two. Keep it all together there. We're going to cut it at the end. Again, pass this under. Now we're going to tie this together. So now I'm going to have to be a little bit more creative my, with my bow because I don't have much to work with, right? Just make sure this is correct. Okay, fold the bottom. Always fold the bottom first. Take the top around and under. I know, oops, the top, I mean the bottom. You do loop your loop. You take the top to the right, to the left. And to the left, that's where it go under. Going to tie this there. If voila, I wanted just a little boy. Now I got it right. Now I'm going to cut my loop, and we're going to cut that right here. And then. Another thing about this, you can always move it if it was not low enough. Okay, now that's about where I want it. I cut with the rectangle uh, stitch die, the stitch rectangle, and this is this one right here. I'm going to have the measurement, so I don't know if you kept it the way that they came, but it's the one on that side there the long one, the largest long, long skinny one. I cut that with crumb cake. Now I stamp this little element in this stamp. I absolutely love it. I stamp that with crumb cake. So it's just like add like kind of wire or linen thread, whatever. And then the pine cone, I know that usually that is brown, but I wanted some grain. So I stamp this part from converting um, oh, with Mossy Meadow. The Merry Christmas that is from the Perfectly Plaid and at that I stamped that with um, Cherry Cobbler. Now I did another layer in the Mossy Meadow and again I will have all measurement on my blog. Absolutely. And always the link is right below in the description. We're going to mount this together, and I'm going to put that with dimensional. Let me have four or five dimensional here. And if you do a lot of uh, cards, one thing that you can take your scissors, be very careful, but see, you can poke that, or you can use the pick tool. That make it very easy to remove those little stubborn uh, thing on the the dimensional. Just be careful to when you pick them up on the not cut yourself with the the scissors. Now I'm going to take this just at the edge there, mm. right here. So see, oops, that's little bit sideways there. Let me fix that up here a bit. Here we go. So now I could leave that just like that. Or I stamp with the crumb cake that little filigree um, tree. See? And then you can punch that out with the matching punch. Voila. And you could add this right here. 
and I would have had to move that. You know what? Is it too late? No. My grading, it's a bit, let's move that. Just be careful when you do that not to uh, pull the paper. So I'm going to put that more over here on top of the, here we go. And then I would put that on a dimensional also, but just put the dimensional on the right here in the back. Uh, sorry, on the left. So when you flip it, it's just going to be on the right. And I can put that right here. Voila. So simple. If you want to jazz it and add some bling a bit, you can use the wink of Stella and just add a little bit on the trees and this I barely touch it when I add my wing of Stella. It's just going to add a little bit of shiny like frost on the trees but these are not um, you know the Christmas color that uh, like the red and the green. I went more in like I said the vintage colors there. Et voila! So now you get a little bit of bling and very, very country look of a Christmas card. So um, it's just to show that you can expand a everyday stamp set and turn it to be a Christmas. So I hope you're going to visit my blog. Right below you get the direct link. You're going to see uh, the PDF that I'm offering for uh, between July 15 to the 25th for Christmas in July. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, happy stamping my friend.